just to teach them simple signs that they can say, you know, talk over lunch or talk on their break. But I think it's really important that they understand that they need to have interpreters at these little meetings, at discipline meetings, at any kind of changes within the company, <coughs> and, that it, and then also have a copy of the law with you on, in your uh, workplace so that they can see it is a law and it's mandated by the federal government to, to have an interpreter. And if they don't, then what I found in my own experiences, especially in when I worked in Lancaster, is that people don't complain. The deaf people didn't complain. When something, when their, when their uh, rights were violated over and over again, they didn't complain. As an interpreting agency, we can't do that. You need to go to maybe Disability Rights Network or ODHH, you know, and you need to file, a, it can be a pain. It can be a pain. You might have to file a complaint, and you might have to go through some paperwork, and you might have to tell your story over and over again. Um, but when I was a caseworker back in 2000, 1999 to 2000, we didn't have social media. And what I wanted to say was I was thinking about her question. That, that really, you know, resonated with me. Um, I thought that was really an important question that she wants to know how she can sell herself. And I really like the presentation you guys gave because you can sell yourself on Twitter, on Facebook, and um, reach out to the community and maybe motivate yourself and, you know, and find um, other, talk to other deaf people who are successful and see what they did. And sometimes it's <coughs> motivation, sometimes it's eagerness, it's um, going out there and meeting people, networking, and all those things are really, really important when you want to improve your uh, job, your workplace, or your where you're working, whether it be a promotion or wanting to go to another company. So, all, so Facebook can be used that way. Um, and I was really impressed with that because, um, and personally, myself, another thing I do is I have, I have a store. I also have a, 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 a thrift shop that I own. And how we sell, we use Facebook to sell almost everything by taking pictures and putting it online. And people come in and go, I saw that and I want that. And it's sold. So it really, really works. We get calls from all over the state asking for things, and it's free. Facebook is free. So, and it has really promoted my my own personal business as well as my the interpreting business. So you can use it in, in different aspects of your life. So I would think you should really try and reach out to other successful deaf people. Like I would always have a like find a role model. So find someone that motivates you and see what they did to get where they are. Um, and I think that might be, and, and social media is a good way of doing that. Um, <coughs> just, just to add on to that, I think that's a really good point um, and, and how you can utilize social media to do this because you'd be surprised how many people are just like you, have something to say that don't have a voice necessarily in saying it because, you know, in, 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 the, in sort of the real world aspect, um, maybe you don't have the backing for it. Maybe you don't have the right people or right support to do or ask those but, but sort of questions. And I think social media helps because once you put that, um, put your message out there that you know maybe you're having trouble with something or maybe you just you're passionate that you want to say something about a, a service that you received or you know a, 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 a claim that you're you're trying to get or trying to advocate something. Um, you, you'd be surprised to find that there are other people that are constantly searching for other people just like them that have the um, same challenges that you have with something. And I think it's a good way to just put it out there and see how, if you get any feedback. But I think you'll be surprised um, on how many people are searching for it that you don't necessarily know um, that they're out there. So I think it's a good, good point to add on to what you just said. Okay. Testing, one, two, three. Okay, we're ready to go. All right. <laughs> you know, once Facebook came into the world, Twitter, LinkedIn, once all those different websites came up, you know, Google Plus, really it was just, you know, I'm not sure what the deaf and hard of hearing group feels about that, but I really feel that communication access is really just skyrocketed you know I feel you know more equal with with the hearing group I, you know there's no com conversation barriers communication barriers 
I want to explain, you know, with social media how it relates to, to my work now. How many of you thought our federal government, you know, is not, not on social media? How many of you, you think that? You're wrong. You're wrong. It, not just my, my agency already has Facebook. They have a Facebook page and fan page. We have Twitter, YouTube, and all of that. And the reason our agency has that is, and the reason why we want to be involved in that community is many people envision our agency, the Department of Defense and different federal agencies want to just, you know, it's all behind red tape. We can't say anything. You know, we want to be involved in social communities, social communities. We want to tell you what's going on with, like DLA. We want to put out pictures and videos to show that we're supporting, we're supporting the war, we're supporting those troops. The FBI has their own Facebook. F CIA has it as well. There's just many different agencies that are, that are involved in those communities and we want to be open. And also, I'm not the only IT specialist. Also, we recruit a recruiter for, I'm also a recruiter for deaf and hard of hearing. You know, I go to different deaf colleges and universities, NTID, RIT, uh, Gallaudet. I go to their job fairs. Uh, I do the workforce recruiting program. It's like a back door for, well, it's, it's not only for deaf people. It's just for people with disabilities. I go to different colleges and universities who, who are looking for federal jobs and, you know, sit down and talk to them. And when I explain... I recently uh, went to the NTID job fair <laughs> in Rochester, New York. You know, when the students came up to me and, you know, asked me what DLA was, I explained everything. And every student that I spoke with or chatted with, you know, I told them that DLA has a Facebook page and a Twitter. And, uh, you know, I told them to join in and join in on the discussion and conversations. You know, we do a lot of information is put out through that, mm -hmm. through social networking in different communities. And also, we help, that helps us with recruiting uh, future employees. So, you know, the DLA is just, it's really cool. And, you know, also, uh, I tell them where to find the uh, DLA webpage, and it's just really neat. Okay, thank you. And I would like to ask all of you what you suggest, uh, or what's your advice for people looking for work, looking for a job, for employment? Yes. What's uh, some advice you can give people who are looking for employment? Okay. We'll, we'll limit, to a, limit it to a minute here. We at ZVRS, uh, my company, have about 60% Deaf, deaf and hard of hearing working, uh, deaf and hard of hearing people in our company. Um, there's about 300 to 400 all over the nation. So at any time, people who are deaf and hard of hearing, you know, maybe uh, somebody who's hearing who wants to become an, an interpreter, a uh, video interpreter, we're welcome to that. We have a website, zvrs.com, where we will look to match your skills. Also, in my area, I'm always looking for skilled, skilled people who are interested in technology, uh, you know, helping people, socializing, who are learning different things. Like my representative, Cornell, back here. He represents the Lancaster area. So at any time, if you hear people or hear about it or you're interested, contact me. I'm, I'm glad to help. Anyone else? <coughs> I also forgot to add that I'm from Goodwill, Keystone area, and I'm a little new, so excuse me. I'm always networking with deaf people 24 hours a day. Uh, you know, deaf people depend, you know, they might be looking for advice. Um, you know, I, 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 I don't look at their limitations. 
you know, or I can't find work or that kind of stuff. You know, if they're looking for a job or they need, need help filling out an application, you know, call me at any time. Uh, and um, I'm always there with deaf people to help. Or if you have a question or a problem, I'm there to, to solve your problems. So. <coughs> okay. Can I come over here and make it quicker for the microphone? Does that work? Okay, does that work? All right. Uh, quick tips um, from a business perspective. Uh, one of the things is uh, be prepared to sell yourself with all the positive things you can do. Let's not start off with all the things you can't do. Um, certainly when we're dealing with folks who have uh, disabilities that aren't obvious, um, we still have some problems with people who will just kind of like spill the gates of everything that they've done at the doctor and, you know, all those kinds of things. And, you know, you d it's kind of like I always tell people, I have a little bit of ADD myself and, you know, shiny shoes, really pretty handbags, you know, they distract me. So if people kind of dump all their garbage in the middle of my desk, that distracts me from what's really good about you. Um, and about the great things you have to offer. So really kind of prepare that 30 second commercial or a couple of minute commercial about what makes you great for that job. Also make sure when you're applying online and you're building your, you know, kind of attaching your resume to particular postings that are out there. If I'm hiring for a job as a marketer or a marketing professional, please make sure that your resume makes sense for the fact that you're applying for a marketing professional job. If you have retail experience <laughs> and other unrelated things, that's fine, but somehow your resume should be built to make it make sense to me. Why are you applying for this job? Otherwise, I think you're just like one of about 500 people out there or more who are just throwing things at a wall and hoping something sticks and that you haven't really done your homework to figure out what the job's really about and that you're a great fit. Sometimes that means having more than one resume, um, depending upon the types of jobs you might be going after. Sometimes that might be putting a cover letter on top that explains why you're actually interested in that particular position. You have to make it clear to an employer why you're applying to them and for that particular role. Thank you. Uh, I would like to make a comment. Uh, I happen to work for OVR, and often when I'm working with uh, different consumers, I encourage them to really work on their interview skills. A lot of them, their interview skills are really weak. They, they give away too much information. So I have to work with them on their, their interview skills, what they should say. And, you know, I, I, I tell them not, what, not the things not to say. I, I tell them to work on their, their hard skills and soft skills as what. Uh, as well. You know, when they look at soft skills, you know, I tell them what the soft skills are and hard skills are, so they'll be prepared to know what, what to say. And not only that, often people ask, you know, what are your strengths? And that's easy. But then, you know, what are your weaknesses? And they don't have anything to say. And, you know, I say we all have weaknesses. So often, you know, thinking about this, you know, saying no is a weakness. Does that mean it's a bad thing? No. I try and teach them different things and, and guide them to a successful answer. Also, we have what we call mock interviews. And that means before I, before I do the training, I have counsel, you know, just a counselor. They don't know who that is. And they'll work with the consumer. And they, it's like a real interview between the two. Once the interview is done, then they'll call their primary counselor, who's typically me, and I'll go in and we'll discuss it. We'll discuss their strengths and weaknesses through the interview. So, you know, I say, oh, you know, really you said that? You know, did you behave that way? Did you sit that way? You know, we go through all that. So we teach them to be prepared and, you know, to become successful as an employee. Thank you. Uh, is there anybody else? Oh, would you mind coming up here? This will be the last one. This will be okay. the last one. Is this on? Mm -hmm.
Yeah, so. It's on. Okay. Um, I want to talk a little bit, uh, if, if I can still squeak in a little bit about social media, um, I'd like to do that. But also, I think when you market yourself for a job, it's very similar to when you would market yourself to be accepted into a college. So you want to make sure that you're qualified to do the position and speak to your strengths. Um, and somebody, and I forget who, mentioned being professional. A lot of what we see now with students um, is they'll go to even college interviews in pants and sneakers and a hoodie. And <coughs> there was one student who was applying for a scholarship and he had his hood up during the interview. So it's really important to be very, very professional um, and speak to your strengths in addressing that job. The, the thing I want to talk about, social media, I also, I'm not on Facebook, but most colleges are. And what we see is that email is declining. We can't often get a hold of students through email. So texting is up. Um, no one uses phones anymore. And I think that's a great thing for universal design and for leveling the playing field because we can all reach one another through, through texting. The, the downfall of what we see with texting is it's having some negative effects on people's communi communication skills with regard to writing. So be very careful to keep your writing skills up. Have someone review your resume. <coughs> um, you know, work at your writing skills. Take courses at colleges to enhance your writing. That will make you far more marketable. Um, so don't forget about that piece. A good writer is worth their weight in gold. We see students coming out of high school who are terrible writers. Students graduate from college who are terrible writers. If you can become a good writer, that's going to set you apart. Um, the other thing about social media is it's wonderful for networking. So the networking that I've had an opportunity to do is through listservs, and th which unfortunately you have to be hooked into the listserv, so it's more limiting than social media. But in trying to develop a captioned media policy at Elizabethtown College and looking at other policies and other websites, I ended up contacting the provost, um, Jerry, Jeremy Hefner at RIT, because they have a great site. So when I sent my captioned media policy to our provost, I was able to say this is with the blessing of Jeremy Hefner, provost at RIT. And it made me look wonderful. And I don't know Dr. Hefner. He doesn't know me. But there's a lot you can do through social media and networking to get information that you otherwise wouldn't be able to get. So. I would encourage all of you to use that. I think most, most colleges, most jobs have a Facebook. Um, the students coming into Elizabethtown College this year, it was the first year we had Facebook, they almost revamped our entire roommate selection process on their own before they even got there. So it is a powerful tool, and don't underestimate it. So I have a question. So um, on the resumes, if a person's hard of hearing, um, you know, they, on there you have your phone number on there. But that's really not the good way to c contact the person. And sometimes, is it appropriate to put your email? Yes, so and it's appropriate to say your preference, or you could say oh, please it text. It doesn't necessarily need to have a phone number there. Uh, put the best way to contact you. Just make sure that if you're putting your email on there that you check it. I don't know how many people yeah. don't respond to me, so either it's blatant or they're just not checking. And I'm missing opportunities. So yeah. it's okay to do that? Yeah, 